Why is urban economics an exciting research field? In urban economics today, there's many big questions. With the rise of the internet, Google, YouTube, Facebook, why haven't we all spread out? Why do cities exist at all? If we spread out, land rents will be lower, have all sorts of space to yourself. But we see that more and more people than more than ever are moving to cities. We know that urbanites earn more money than they would if they lived in uh, towns with relatively few people. Why? What is it about cities that increases our productivity? Urban economists have pointed out three major things. You learn more in cities. Universities. I teach at UCLA. Universities are a type of city bringing students and faculty uh, in close physical proximity. You learn from your roommates, people on your same hall, more than you learn from just sort of strangers in, in, in the same general area. But strangers can become friends as they bump into each other at a Starbucks or on a, a date arranged by friends. There's networking in cities. Young people don't have a proven reputation yet. And networking in terms of jobs, even marriage markets, seeking to meet each other, more opportunities, more serendipity in cities. Consumer cities. There's no Starbucks or fancy restaurants in the middle of nowhere. Where there's cities like New York City or London where you have a large number of sophisticated people living, these individuals move to areas that are exciting, but by moving to such areas, there's sort of a chicken and egg effect that they make the area more interesting as restaurants and, and, and funky, uh, funky shops open up to be near these sophisticated people to sell to them. But cities are no free lunch. While there's many benefits of living in big cities, we know the horror stories. Think of New York City in the 1970s, where I grew up. New York City in the 1970s suffered from high crime. There was traffic congestion in the developing world today with the sharp growth in cars, which offers opportunities. Yeah, an unintended consequence is, is being stuck in traffic in high po air pollution. And cities can also be stressful. Uh, just uh, There's an ongoing debate that Glazer talks about in The Triumph of the Cities of whether living in big cities is good for your health, and there's evidence going in both ways. The role of the urban economist here. Economists are always asking what ifs. Uh, we have the bad word counterfactual for that. So when we think about the benefits of urbanization, think of when Facebook moved from Harvard to Stanford at, out to Palo Alto. Why did it move there? Was it just that Mark Zuckerberg wanted Good, good amenities to swim in that pool that we saw in that movie, The Social Network. It was clear that as Facebook was a little growing firm, that he thought there'd be benefits of being in Silicon Valley. That's a key example of the benefits of urbanization. If mayors understand that firms seek out such agglomeration, should they actively pursue policies to attract certain firms? So in New York City, if the Yankees threaten to leave, if Goldman Sachs threatens to leave Manhattan, should the mayor of New York City offer generous subsidies to keep such productive firms downtown? Or is this picking winners? Urban economists are useful here in studying that. Another way that urban economists are useful is measuring the costs of, it, of agglomeration. And so a, a big research agenda, given the importance of quality of life, to urbanites, I moved to Los Angeles in part because of its great quality of life, is what can cities do to improve their quality of life and what might be cost-effective strategies? So a, a simple example, should New York City hire more cops? To answer that question, and uh, Steve Levitt in his work uh, bundled into free economics has discussed this, there's two questions to answer. If you want to know the answer, should New York City hire more cops? You need to answer, do hiring more police cause a reduction in crime? A, in, we see a correlation that cities with more cops have more crime, but a correlation does not imply causation. Do cities with more cops, does that cause less crime? To answer that, you need to figure out what would have been the crime levels in such a city if it hadn't hired those cops. That's the counterfactual. The second piece of information you need is, how much do the people of New York City value safety? A, a, a small improvement in safety brought about by the cops it's so the job of the urban economist to measure both of those. Now, the ability to migrate offers the opportunity to individuals to get the hell out of a city that's suffering. If you live in a nation with many cities and there's relatively easy migration across cities, then you always have the option to leave. If Los Angeles' quality of life really falls apart, I'm a homeowner here, 
and I'd suffer an asset loss uh, if there's new news that Los Angeles quality of life stinks, perhaps because of climate change. But I can move my family to San Francisco or Seattle or one of the other 300 cities in the U.S. These cities together form a system of cities, which is a type of insurance policy against bad shocks that occur to any one city.